Factorio trains are the next step up in logistics after belts and allow massive quantities of goods to be transported quickly over long distances. They're faster than belts, can generally carry more stuff and allow multiplexing. That is, you can transport multiple goods down a single line. On the other hand, they are more complicated to set up and mean that goods arrive in batches rather than turning up as a steady flow. Welcome to Lawrence Plays, where I shall be showing you how to get a basic train system up and running and then expand it to one that can serve an entire factory. At its simplest, a train system consists of a pickup station and a drop off station joined by some rail with a train to run between them. This train can, if you want, be controlled manually by simply getting into the train by pressing return and then using the movement controls to drive it. This can be convenient for construction trains, but isn't viable for long term logistics. We need to automate the train. To do this, click on a locomotive, then click Add Station. The list will show any stations on your current rail network in white and any on a different network in red. Choose where you want the train to go, then repeat to add in the second station on your network. Next, we can add wait conditions. Typically, you will tell a train to wait at a pickup station until it's full and at a drop off station until it's empty, but there are more complex conditions available as well, such as setting how long the train should wait at a station. Once the train is programmed, flick the switch over to automatic and it will start running. Note that automated locomotives can't drive backwards, so if you want a train to travel back and forth along a single rail like this, you will need one pointing in each direction. These don't actually have to be at the end of the train, but it feels logical to place them like this. Also note that stations must be on the right side of the rail for an approaching train. Each station will need a set of inserters or pumps to load or unload the train. These should be placed next to where the wagon will stop and will typically load to or from chests or tanks. This allows your station to contain a buffer, meaning that the train can load or unload as quickly as possible and your factory can continue to run even when there isn't a train parked in the station. The system you can see here is nice and simple and for a single train works fine. However, if you give each train its own railway system, it's going to be a nightmare to lay out, at least once you try to add more than a couple of trivial trains, and it's just going to get worse later on. You're also missing out on some of the most useful features of trains. So, let's think about sharing tracks. The next thing to do is clearly to combine the two lines into a single main line. This looks fine, the trains can run up and down it, and each station has a little siding to keep the train out of the way while it loads or unloads. Let's let this run for a moment and see how it goes. Oh, that's not so good. The trains clearly don't know to stay out of each other's way. What can we do about this? If only there were some way to tell trains not to drive into each other. OK, that was a little bit rhetorical, and you've probably guessed that there is indeed a way to do that. Introducing the rail signal. These signals split the rail network up into what the game calls blocks. Any train which arrives at a signal will only pass it if the following block is empty. So, as you can see here, because the other train is already inside this block, this train is waiting patiently at a red signal. A block is defined as anywhere after that signal before you reach another signal. And if I hold a signal in my hand, you can see that the game automatically displays different blocks in different colours, so you can easily tell where they end. If I add an extra section of rail that crosses the main line but isn't actually connected to it, you'll see that this counts as part of the same block as well, protecting cross traffic from being hit by one of our main trains. Note that trains only consider signals on the right side of the rail for their direction of travel. Signals on the left are ignored if there's a signal on the right at the same point, or will completely block the train from going that way if there's nothing on the other side. This makes the line into a one-way line. This is the simplest way of getting multiple trains to play nicely with a single rail. However, there are a few serious problems with it. The first is that you can only have one area of shared rail, so you can't split it up into different regions. Secondly, all the sidings off it have to be completely exclusive to a single train. If there were two trains trying to pick up stone, for example, you could end up with one in the loading station, with the other one parked outside it waiting to come in. A complete deadlock. The third major problem is that you can only really ever have one train on the move at a time. Imagine this system with 20 or 30 trains. They would spend all their time waiting for the main line to be free, and you get almost no throughput. Clearly, this system needs some more work. My next design turns the main line into a loop. 
you'll see that I've given each station an entrance and exit, with the signals just on one side of the track, so the trains are forced to go round the loop in the correct direction. However, if I hold a signal again, you'll see that this hasn't actually made any difference. There's still a single block for the main line, and the trains won't enter it until it's empty. To fix this, I can add more signals in along the block. You can put the signals in as often as you want, but general wisdom is that putting them roughly a train length apart is optimal. Now that we've split the main line into several blocks, the trains will still wait to enter each block until it's safe to do so, but because the blocks are so much smaller, it usually will be safe immediately, and there's now room for a lot more trains to use the main line at once. There is one more change to make to this design before the standard basic layout is complete. Now that the trains are all travelling in the same direction around the main loop, there's no need to have a locomotive on the back and have them turn round. Instead of having the stations coming off the loop at 90 degrees, let's put them in as parallel sidings like this, joined at both ends. This saves the cost of building a second locomotive and significantly speeds up the train as it's not pulling the dead weight of a backwards locomotive. It also saves a little bit of space in the stations. This is the basic setup I use for my factories, although typically with rather longer trains and, and a few more stations. This layout will do you very nicely as long as you have a single main loop running around your entire factory with all of your stations coming off it. It will even allow you to have simple spurs coming off one part of the loop and rejoining the main loop again like this. These spurs can be as complicated as you like, in including having their own stations or even their own extra spurs coming off those. None of this is a problem. The elephant in the room, the major factor that I haven't mentioned yet, is when rails cross over. We've not touched on those yet, and without them you are limited to a single loop with the basic spurs coming off it, and that's going to lead to a lot of extra travel time, and areas of your factory where all your trains will pass through, leading to a lot of congestion. So, let's take that previous example. Instead of having a simple spur off one side of the loop, let's make a proper junction where trains can go either way. So what I've done here, as you can see if I hold a signal, is to set the entire junction as a single block. This will work, the trains won't crash into each other, and they won't deadlock, so it is functional. However, the throughput is limited, because a train travelling east to west will have to wait for a train travelling west to east, even though the two trains don't want to use the same line. There is no risk of them crashing, but they still won't use the same block at the same time. OK, we've seen this problem before. If we add a couple of signals into that centre section to split the block up, that'll fix the problem, right? Well, yes and no. East-West and West-East trains will now happily go past each other without stopping, so that problem is sorted. But a junction like this is very vulnerable to deadlock, as you can see in this example. Here, each train has entered the junction perfectly legally, but none of them are able to move past their signal until another train has moved, so they're all completely stuck. If this happens to you, there's not really anything you can do other than go in and shuffle them around manually until you've declogged it, so it's very important to make sure that your rail system is designed so that this doesn't happen in the first place. Since I'm talking about it, you won't be surprised to learn that there is in fact a solution to this problem, and that is chain signals. Chain signals are quite intimidating when you first try to understand them, but once it clicks, they're actually quite straightforward. A chain signal cleverly knows where the train wants to go, and mirrors the next signal that it will find. So, if the next signal is green, the chain signal will show green and the locomotive can trundle through quite happily. If there's another train after the next signal, the next signal will be red, and so the chain signal will repeat the red, and your train will wait patiently. The really clever bit is if there are multiple exits from the next block, the chain signal will show blue, and if the exit that the train wants to take is green, then the train will go, knowing that it's safe. So, let's give that junction another try. This time, I've made the full four-way junction with chain signals on the entrances and normal signals on the exits. This is nearly correct, but you can see that the horizontal trains are still waiting for each other when they don't need to. This is because trains still aren't allowed to share a block, but if we add extra chain signals in on the midpoints of the junction, then they will start to behave as we expect. The horizontal trains will happily share the junction, but if the vertical train is in there, they will wait to ensure that there's no collision. This is very nearly the standard four-way rail junction that I use on all my train systems. However, there's still a few possible ways that a train could end up waiting when it doesn't have to. Can you see what they are and how you'd fix it? Pause the video here if you want to have a think about it yourself, or just keep watching for the answer. Trains will still block each other unnecessarily on the diagonals. So if one train is going from north to west, it will block another train going from east to south, even though their routes won't intersect because the bottom right corner of the junction is a single block. 
The easiest way to fix this is to put in a chain signal between every join of the rails like this. Now the junction is as smooth and efficient as we can make it. I think it's worth understanding how chain signals work, at the very least because it's interesting and can help you debug when something inevitably goes wrong. But as you're setting up your first junctions, remember these two rules. Put chain signals on the entrance and for every signal you put inside the junction, and put normal signals on the exits to the junction. Also, try to avoid putting junctions too close together. If there isn't room for a complete train to park between them, you can then get a deadlock between multiple junctions, and that's even more frustrating, because you either need to completely redesign that area of your rail network, or signal the two junctions as if they were one single massive junction, and that will completely wreck your train throughput rate. I hope that's been useful and has taught you everything you need to get, to get your trains running on time, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or come along to one of my Factorio streams and ask me there. The streams run every Monday and I'm currently working my way through space exploration with Crastorio 2 with a group of friends. If you want to catch my tutorials as they come out, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I leave you with one final warning. Trains are dangerous. Thanks for watching.